Well, folks, we are blessed to have Brian Kirkman with us, who's going to share his story about diabetes. And Brian, welcome to Beat Diabetes. It is an honor to be here, sir. Well, it's great to have you. Um, so let's get started where you first found out that you were diabetic and your blood work turned uh, came back and it was all crazy. I'm assuming that before that, you didn't think you had too much of a problem. Tell us how it all started for you. I guess leading up to the discovery of the humongous A1C number, I've always kind of struggled with food. A lot of people have, you know, addictions to many things. We turn to different things in our lives for comfort and food was always my thing. And I had had previous blood work done. I had been given bad A1C numbers. I think I had a 6.1 about two years ago. And you would think that would be kind of eye opening for me, but it just at the time it wasn't. And then I had a really big health scare at the end of August of last year, went to my doctor and we did my blood work. I kind of expected it to not really be that good because I knew how I was eating and I wasn't eating the best. I mean, you know, addicted to basically sodas, lots of sugar, fast food. I've seen your videos on processed food and things like that. Um, processed food was definitely a major part of my diet and did the blood work and got those numbers back. And I, I wasn't shocked to see 9.9. .9. Um, it definitely opened my eyes up and freaked me out because I realized that now I'm 43 years old. And as you get older, things are very hard to reverse and take care of. Unlike when I was in my 20s where you can lose weight, no problem. And it kind of freaked me out because my livelihood was at stake with my job. I was dealing with a knee injury and I needed to lose weight for the knee injury because I couldn't have surgery because my BMI was too high and they were scared to put me under for anesthesia. So that on top of seeing that number just kind of made me realize I really need to get it together and stop, you know, making the excuses that we all make with certain things and um, just put that all behind me and start moving forward in the right path. And that's what I've been doing for the last six months. So you mentioned that you had a health scare, which initially sent you the, to the doctor to get some blood work done. Uh, were you having some diabetic symptoms? Uh, exactly. What was the health scare? Um, well, aside from the surgery thing, obviously, I just I was so sluggish. I was tired all the time. Um, at the time, I didn't realize what it was. I would wake up to urinate probably 10 times almost every single night. And I'm just thinking that, you know, oh, well, I drank a lot of water before I went to bed, which I come to find out it had nothing to do with that. Um, when I would lay down at night to go to sleep, I would lay down in the bed and I would immediately get dizzy. I'd start feeling the room spinning and it would take a good 15, 20 seconds for that to go away. I had had a moment where my son, I was at his basketball game and I was helping coach and out there hooting and hollering. And about 20 minutes after the game, we're all standing around having a conversation and I started to get lightheaded and I felt like I was going to drop to the floor and I'm looking at everybody around me and I'm thinking, okay, how can I play this off to where it doesn't look like I'm about to pass out, but I'm about to pass out. And so those those few moments right there really scared me to realize that I need to get it under control or something bad's going to happen to me. OK, now at this point, uh, tell us your weight. What, what was uh, your weight at that point? At that point, I was I was 432 last June. Now, when I got this blood work done and back in August or at September of last year, I was actually 418 at the time. And. I have no idea how I lost 14 pounds <laughs> in those uh, couple of months, considering how bad I was eating, but somehow they went away. But as far as when I started my journey to better health and getting my life back in order, I was 418 at the time. Okay. Now, a lot of people that are big, I would say most people that are you know, significantly obese make efforts to try to lose weight. Had that been your case? Obviously, you hadn't been too successful, but had you gone on different diets or tried different things or were you just satisfied to be at that level? Uh, well, actually, about 15 years ago, I dropped 105 pounds because I got to a big point and I just got tired of dealing with it. So I went cold turkey and really got myself in order. Then eventually all of that just kind of went away. Um, but I've 
I never really liked, you know, the word diet because to me, diet was always so temporary, but I have attempted many life-changing health journeys over the years. And within two to three months, everything, you know, you get relaxed, you get a little bit slack about your eating and one thing leads to another, you're having a pizza and then you're having more pizza and then Taco Bell shows up and all the soda show back up again. And I just fall right off the wagon. So I've probably been on 15, 16 different attempts at getting healthy in the last 10 to 12 years, and none of them have actually stuck until now. So you were at four, uh, 400 plus pounds, 418, I think you said, and uh, you, you were, you're not that old. You were, Last year, this was around August. You were what, 42, 43? 42 at the time, yeah. 42 at the time. They tell you you have a blood sugar at 9.9, .9, just a hair under a 10 point uh, A1C. And uh, did you know how bad that was or did they explain to you this is this is big, this is really serious? Oh, no. When I had had blood work done before and I was at a 6.1, I knew the normal range, the pre-diabetic range and the diabetes range. I knew it, but... I just, again, just the addiction to food and using that for comfort and the addiction to that sugar, I just didn't quite take it as seriously as I should have. But that 9.9 .9 was just, wow. I knew that it was extremely serious at that point because I have a grandma who has diabetes. Uh, she's passed away last May. I have an aunt who has diabetes, and I think she's down to four toes now. She's half blind as well because of diabetes. So I, I knew that it was it was basically do or die for me that I either did this or things weren't going to be good for me. So suddenly you had uh, instant motivation to make some major changes. Absolutely, because for me, it was I may lose my job. I've, I've worked at my job for 16 years now. That was in jeopardy. My health was in jeopardy. Obviously, I looked at my son and he can tell that daddy was not feeling good and I was very miserable. And just seeing the look on his face, you know, all of that combined just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. And that was the moment I knew that it was now, now or never. How helpful was your doctor? Did he give you some good advice? Did he give you a, a stern lecture? Uh, what kind of things did he share with you as he gave you that news that uh, you were severely diabetic? Uh, the funny thing is, is actually the person who helped me with my nutrition side of things and the, I guess, emotional healing side of things was actually a really good friend of mine. She has been tremendous with devising my nutrition plan early on. But I, you know, I talked to my doctor and I told him what her and I discussed and the plans that we had, and he was completely on board with it all. And we talked about, you know, certain shots that are out there and certain medications that you could take. And in the beginning, he did put me on metformin for the first three months just to get my blood sugars down a little bit because they were so high. But I did tell him that ultimately, I would like to give this a shot to see if I can handle this with just nutrition. I know what I can do. I know I'm capable of doing it because I lost 105 pounds many, many moons ago. So I know I've got it in me. And I just wanted to have him trust me that I'll do what I'm telling you I'm going to do, and I'm going to make it happen with nutrition. And so far, it's it's worked out. All right. Well, at this point, a lot of people are are wanting to know what was the plan? This lady comes along, a friend of yours, and she gives you some nutritional advice. You accept it. You begin to implement it. What was the advice? What was the plan? How did your diet change and how did your life change? I would love to share that. She's an amazing woman. Um, she kind of understood what I used to eat and the things that would, you know, my, my addiction to sugars and whatnot. So her plan basically revolved around, we're going to get you on a very low carb diet. I typically have between 50 to 70 grams of carbs a day at most. And we're going to focus on good proteins, good fats, good fiber, and, um, you know, moderation with things. I'm very conscious now of how much I'm eating. Um, I can eat some extra vegetables and proteins and things like that. But as far as my carbs, those are very, very limited right now while my, my body is basically weaning myself off of all the excess carbs that I used to have. Um, I hydrate a lot. I stop drinking regular soda. 
I will have one can of diet root beer, you know, once every couple of nights, I'll have a can for dinner. But outside of that, my intake is mainly water right now. And she wanted to make sure that I, I don't really do any carbs at night because I'm not as active at night. So usually my carbs focus between lunch and breakfast. I do eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, normally there's about four hours in between my meals and I typically don't eat any later than 6.30 at night. So by the time I go to bed and I wake up for breakfast, there's about 16 hours in between meetings. So I always consider that my fasting period between yeah. sleeping and waking up and having breakfast the next day. And to be honest, so far, I, I, I feel amazing. Even at 360 pounds, I'm fully energetic. I feel great. And with the meals that I'm doing, I'm not hungry in between. I'm not stuffed in between. And I can tell that the fuel that I'm finally giving my body is the right fuel. And uh, it just keeps me going all day long. I don't nap <laughs> like I used to during the day. I'm pretty much wide awake from 8 a.m. until probably 11 o'clock at night. You said that you eat three meals a day separated by about four hours or so. Do you snack in between those meals? No, sir. Actually, on many previous healthy journeys, I would have breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and dinner. And then I would call it a day. But now I don't need those snacks anymore because I make sure the meals that I'm eating gives me everything that I need to get me through until the next meal. So there really is no need for snacking. Now, my friend did tell me if for whatever reason you get extremely hungry, she's like, I want you to go grab a stick of cheese and some protein and shove that in your mouth. If you feel like you can't make it until the next meal, but she's like, outside of that, you really don't need to be snacking in between. And like I said, I, the meals that I'm eating, my body's pretty content and happy between those meals. Uh, you began to follow the, the approach that she recommends. Uh, mm -hmm. Was there a point where you said to yourself, I think this is working for me? Uh, did it take you very while before, uh, very long before you actually got excited and said, this is going to work? I will say it didn't. It took a couple of weeks. You kind of go through that beginning stage where you're having to, as I call it, you're having to completely readjust your thought process with food. I've had such a Everybody calls it a bad relationship with food. And I've had that for so long. And I knew it was going to take time to reverse, you know, over a decade of what I call toxic thoughts with food. And really, I'd say three weeks in to the new meal plan that she devised for me, I was already feeling 10 times better just three weeks later because I haven't had, I didn't have any soda. For three weeks, I didn't have a lot of sodium. I wasn't eating fast food and things like that. So immediately, my body reacted quick to the changes. So once I started feeling, wow, I, I'm, I'm just beginning and my body's already feeling great. Okay. And she told me, she just said, trust me. I'm not going to let you down. Just trust. Um, I'll give you a football reference. I'm a big Alabama fan. And Nick Saban always talks about the process. And she's uh -huh. like, trust the process. It's going to work. Just do what you're supposed to do and take care of things. And I promise you, it'll work out. And it has. Yeah. So were you testing your blood sugar at all during this time with a glucose meter? Or were you just trusting the process and saying, I'll just do this and we'll see where it goes? Uh, with the injury that I had with work, I had to go see my doctor once a month for checkups to make sure, you know, I'm losing weight and things like that. So we didn't do a monthly glucose check and I didn't even have anything at home. I just trusted what was happening. And I would basically go every three months to get blood work done. And I had, you know, that initial blood work done in September of 2023. That's when I had the A1C of 9.9. .9. My glucose, I think, was around 175 on that first one. And then my triglycerides were 275. And so in November of 2023, we decided to do more blood work just to see where we were at. And after three months of changes, my A1C went to a 6.1 um, after three months. And my triglycerides dropped down to, I want to say it was around 97 and my glucose went from a 175 down to about a 96. So even within three months, everything was starting to drop already. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. So from 
just a hair under 10, 9.9, .9, down to 6.1 in three months' time, and then another three months, and where are you? We are currently at 5.8, which I was I was a little disappointed in. I was really hoping it was going to go below that 5.7 range, but I was like, you know what? It's it's a process. It's going to take time, so I'm, I'm happy to be down 0.3 more in the last three months. Yeah, I absolutely. Well, you know, and, and tell us your current weight. Uh, when I weigh in, I do weigh-ins. And another thing my friend told me, do not weigh in more than once a month. She's like, you do not need to concern yourself with the scale. She goes, do your one-month weigh-in so you don't stress about it. But when I stepped on the scale a week ago from this past Monday, I was down to 360. So that put me at a 58 total loss in the last six months. Yeah. And you haven't even focused on losing weight. It's not like you're saying, got to lose weight, got to lose weight, got to lose weight, right? No, I mean, I, that's one thing I've tried to retrain my brain with as well. A lot of society, you know, we want quick results with everything. I mean, you know, technology's quick results at the push of a button. Everything's right there. And I've had to constantly remind myself every day that this is going to be something that has no timetable. I mean, I, I, I need a timetable in a way because I need to get back to work and get my knee taken care of. But overall, my mindset is I have goals, but there is no timetable for those goals. All I know is that when I wake up every day, I make sure that I win the day. I do everything I'm supposed to do, small little victories every day, and then all of those will lead up to the greater goal, which is my overall total goal. I want to lose 178 pounds total. So if I keep doing what I'm supposed to do every single day and adjusting where needed, then I'll get to where I want to be eventually. So are you starving every day? Are you just constantly ravenous or not? <laughs> actually, no. Um, I don't. We don't actually count calories with this diet. Um, she just gave me things to focus on and make sure I'm portion controlled. And again, I can go heavier on my proteins and my vegetables. But if we had to put a number on it, I'm probably around 2,000 calories every single day. And again, my body's just, I'm not hungry in between meals. After I have breakfast, I can go do things and I'm good to go until about 12, 30, one o'clock and I'll eat again. And then by the time I have dinner, I'm good. And I really don't get hungry at night. And do you, uh, tell us how your, your, uh, your plate has changed. I, I'm assuming that before you started all this, you just ate whatever you wanted to eat. Lots of carbs, lots of fats, Lots of sugars, lots of Cokes, just pretty much whatever and whenever. Uh, give us some specifics. What kind of meals do you have these days? Okay. Uh, well, definitely before I could put down a whole two liter bottle of Mountain Dew and a large pizza from Pizza Hut. Absolutely no problems. Uh, shameful to admit that, but I mean, we we might as well just be open and honest about it. But um, now, like my breakfast, this is my, my breakfast every day. Um, I'm a major meal prepper. I love meal prepping. I hate cooking every day. So on Sunday nights, I'll spend about two hours prepping food for the entire week. And then Thursday, I might cook a little bit more on Thursday, but mostly on Sundays is my main meal prep day. Uh, my breakfast this week is pretty much the same every week. I have what I call my egg bake, and that is eggs, ground turkey, red onions and spinach and i mix all that together i bake it in the oven and i cut it up into squares so that way it's ready in the morning and this morning i took that egg bake i did a half a cup of oatmeal which is i do the unseasoned oatmeal just straight up plain oatmeal and then i'll put a, some guacamole on there i'll put a little bit of sour cream on there for some fats and then i'll make fresh pico de gallo i love pico de gallo so i've got onions tomatoes jalapenos little bit of lime juice and some cumin. And so on my breakfast plate, I'll put the half a cup of oatmeal on the bottom. I'll put my sour cream and my guacamole on top of that. I'll dice up my egg bakes, scatter it all on top of that. And I'll put a humongous scoop full of pico de gallo. And that is my breakfast every single morning. Um, my lunch, it really varies. Sometimes I'll do a big salad with oil and vinegar dressing, some chicken, more pico on top of that, some banana peppers and cucumbers, or I, I get tired of salads, to be honest with you at times. So uh, I think you had done something about keto bread before, and I'm not doing keto, but I do buy the keto bread to at least, you know, limit my carb intake. So if I feel like a sandwich, I'll have a chicken salad sandwich, which is basically just my baked chicken that I do every week. 
I'll dice that up, mix it with a little bit of mayonnaise, throw it between the two pieces of bread, and I'll throw a couple of uh, pickles on there as well because pickles have no sugar, they have no carbs, just some sodium, and that'll be my lunch. And my dinners, again, I'm not doing carbs at dinners because I'm just not active at night to really need carbs. So this week I did smoked Italian chicken breast and I steamed a bunch of broccoli. So when I sit down later tonight, my plate will be filled with smoked chicken and broccoli and that's it. Well, that sounds sounds pretty great to me. I, uh, I am just uh, amazed at the amazing, at the wonderful progress you've made. And, you know, a lot of people assume that if you're really overweight, like you were 400 pounds, you've almost got to get down to a normal weight before your blood sugar will kind of meekly follow behind. But and you're losing weight, you're going the right direction. Mm -hmm. But you're it's still you're 360. That is you're a big guy. And yet your blood sugar <laughs> has really been tamed <laughs> tremendously. How do you account for that? Uh, blessed, I guess. <laughs> you know, it was weird whenever, and I guess this was kind of a mental crutch for me. Whenever I was at my biggest, I would always tell myself, you know, you, you carry it well for a big guy. I mean, I, my job is very active and I, you know, again, I've been there for 16 years, so it's very physical. So I'm on my feet all day long, lifting things, pushing things, pulling things, and so I was always able to move well. I, I kind of joke and say, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but like, I'm a fat guy that's fat and I have muscles. Like I'm a muscular fat guy. I'm not just uh, all fat, but, you know, I, I was able to move well for as big as I was. Even at 432 pounds, I was able to get around fine. I didn't need help doing anything. I mean, was it a little more strenuous? Absolutely. But I, I, I don't know why my body was capable of, you know, handling the load that I was putting on it, but it was, and I, I know gradually it was probably breaking down because of the, the excess that I was putting on it, but I don't know. I've just, I've always been able to move pretty well, even for a 360 pound man. I, I, I'm very nimble. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, and I, I really believe that the reason people that are overweight uh, have so much trouble with blood sugar is not so much the weight they're carrying, but the amount of carbs they're eating and sugars and, and junk. And as a result, when they cut it down, even though they're, they still may be significantly overweight, uh, they, their blood sugar comes down uh, significantly. And it certainly has been the case for you. Uh, what, what would your advice be to people that are just getting started? And, and tell us this. Uh, is this sustainable? Can you see yourself doing this 20 years from now? Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that Monica, well, oh, there we go. Cat's out of the bag, my friend Monica. <laughs> um, that's one thing that she, you know, she thought about with me doing what I'm doing is this, this isn't just a temporary thing. These are meals that can be sustained for the rest of your life. Because now she, she used to make my meal plans for me. She would send me an email every single week. And it would have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner breakdown. And she would specifically put certain things at certain parts of the day where like with the carbs, she didn't want me to have major carbs any more than twice a day. So everything was all planned out into a T. And now that I'm, you know, six months into it, I don't have her meal plan anymore because I've become a lot more educated on food. I've become a lot more aware of what my body needs on a daily basis. So when I go to the store, I've already got a plan of everything I'm going to buy and I know what my body's going to react to. And it's just, it's so much easier now doing it than it was a couple of months ago. So to me, this is a completely sustainable thing. I'm not, I'm not eating anything crazy. I'm not on a, a fad diet or anything like that. I'm just limiting my carbs, good proteins, good fats and good fiber. And I'm hydrating and I'm exercising. So it's really something that anybody can do every single day. Yeah, that is great. You know, thinking about your friend who helped you so much, uh, a lot of people have well-meaning friends that give all kinds of advice about how to uh, improve your health, how to beat diabetes, different things. Some of the advice is way off the wall. Some of it is just flat wrong. Some of it is not going to do that much. And others is great advice. <laughs> you just happen to be blessed with not only a friend, but somebody who really knew what they were talking about. Oh, yeah. There was one thing she did tell me in the beginning, aside from just trusting her, which I, I do. I mean, there's she's never steered me wrong in any aspect of my life. I mean, she's helped me not only with my weight loss, but I mean, emotionally, spiritually.
really so many things she's helped me open up my eyes to. But um, I just I trust everything she says. And she told me in the beginning, she goes, be prepared. She's like, this is no offense to anybody that you know. But when you start losing weight and when you start doing things, people are going to come at you from all angles and they're going to tell you what they think is best. They're going to want you to do this. They're going to want you to try that. They're going to think this is better than that. She goes, I just want you to politely decline and just say, I appreciate that, but we've, we've got it under control. And she goes, ignore the outside noise and just trust me that what I'm telling you is going to work. And I've, I've done that because believe me, I've gone to family's houses and stuff and they want to tell me this and tell me that I'm not upset by it. I, I get it. Everybody wants to help, but I know that she is leading me down the right path clearly because it's, it's working and I 100% trust her. And I just ignore the uh, external factors as some people like to call it. Well, I love it. You know, uh, from the Bible's perspective, an angel is considered a messenger from God. And uh, she was in an earthly sense, an angel sent to you to help you. And the proof is in the pudding. You have done so very, very well. So thank you, Brian, for sharing your story with us. I know you're going to encourage a lot of people. Any last words you want to say? Uh, all I can say is trust the process, do the right thing, and everything will work out in its own time. Again, don't put a timetable on it. You got to make sure you wake up every morning ready to attack the day, ready to make those small victories. Because with me and being addicted to sugar and food like I was, it's a conscious decision that I have to make every day. And trust me, the holidays, December was hard. My friends know me as the Little Debbie Christmas tree cake guy. <laughs> and let me just tell you, I did not touch one Little Debbie Christmas tree cake this past Christmas. And it was very hard to not touch those things. But uh, at the end of the day, my friend refers to those. He said, man, all that stuff is, that's mouth pleasure. That's all it is. He's like, it's not doing anything for you. It's not serving a purpose. It's not giving you anything positive. It's just mouth pleasure. He's like, why do you need it? I'm like, you know what? I don't need it. And I've, I feel pretty good about that. So just stay the course, trust the process. You'll get there when you get there and uh, just keep working hard and you'll see success.